Hello folks and welcome to a modern video uh, in the past, uh, the recent time actually, uh, modern has become kind of a, a little bit of a weird place. We have every deck is basically a Leyline of the Guild Pack plus Siren of Draco deck and uh, because uh, Violent Outburst was banned, now people are looking to other enablers for the Cascade spells which continue to be pretty broken. So what we're going to be trying out today is uh, Cascade Tribal, I guess. So we're going to be playing Bloodbreath Marauder, Shardless Agent, Cascade deck, which game one plays uh, just some Crushing Footfalls, uh, trying to put some Rhinos into play. Uh, we actually have some Griefs, some Street Wraiths, and Architects of Will. Uh, these are ways to help um, ensure that we have access to a quick... Delirium, so that we can use uh, the, the Cascade Trigger from Broadway My Other. Uh, we also have the brand new, I guess they're not brand new anymore, but like the Solvay Lands, we have a couple of those to help us uh, with that little feat. Uh, we have a bunch of free spells because, you know, this format is all about free spells, so might as well have some Force of Negations, Forces of Despair. This is one, one of the unsung heroes of the cycle. Uh, this actually was pretty decent in, in its draft format. And then we have some grief as some extra some extra free cards. And then finally, to round things out, we have a very interesting card here in Incubation, Incongruity. This is uh, for hybrid, I guess, of so green and blue. Look at the top five cards in library. You may reveal a creature card and put them into your hand. So that's going to be a way to look for one of our Charlotte's Agents or Blood, uh, Blood Breathe Marauders, or I guess also Sign of Draco or Griefs or any of these. So it actually can help us in multiple ways uh, in that sense. It, it's also both a sorcery and an instant for delirium purposes. And then it also has a, another side, which is incongruity, which is effectively a removal spell. So it exiles a creature and then the creature puts a 3-3 frog lizard into play. That is what we're going to be doing in the main deck. Now, when things get really interesting is in the sideboard. And this is why this is a <laughs> this is a Cascade Tribal deck, because if we have Inevitable Betrayal for uh, decks like uh, Creativity or even potentially Primeval Titan decks and whatnot, and then we have Living Ends as well, because we already have a bunch of uh, Living End cards. So we already have our Architects, Street Wraiths, and Griefs, and we also have Endurance. All of these kind of enable <laughs> the Living End thing, uh, same with Subtlety. We just naturally have a bunch of creatures that we can get back for value. So um, when in matchups where Living End is the right way to go, we can go for that. Otherwise, we are just a crushing footfalls or potentially even an inevitable betrayal deck. We also have answers to Chalice, which obviously is going to be pretty good against us. So Leyline Binding and Foundation Breaker, both a great answers to Chalice, as well as, of course, the four main deck copies of Force of Negation. But this is a really spicy number that we're going to be uh, trying out today. Uh, thank you, Steps, for the donation. It's been a while since I did a donut uh, list for Modern. So hopefully you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you for round number one. Round number one. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this actually looks pretty good for me. Yeah, let's keep this. So we can go turn one. We can fetch and put some rhinos into play. Turn two, we can play a cycle land. And then monkey. Eh, that's pretty bad for us, but it, it'll be okay. So we actually can... We can achieve a fairly easy delirium here. So we have some rhinos going on there. No need to cycle right now. We get free value next turn. We can still get the black red survey land also if we need to. Scion of Draco. Ah, oh, that would have been pretty decent to draw. One thing to be very mindful here is going to be our <laughs> our mana base. Like our, our colors are gonna be not necessarily easy to to assemble. So footfalls goes down. Nice little top decked ley line there. Oh, uh, hmm. I guess I'm just gonna play fetch land and say go. And then, because I'm not planning to play Shardless Agent on turn three, because that can just get counter. So I'm aiming to play the Shardless Agent on the turn where I have the Crashing Footfalls coming off suspend. This is going to force my opponent to have two counter spells. They kept on top with the, the Surveil, which is a little bit threatening. Of note, we can also cycle. Okay, land was exiled. That's cool. We're gonna get some Surveil action here. Get the something theater. Huh, okay. So that, that one's nice. So we're going to... I guess we're not gonna be there, but it's still probably worth keeping. So let's cycle for a blue. I'm gonna draw the little guy. Now we get to untap. Cascade continues to tick down. Oh, interesting. Let's go with Hedge Maze. So this is going to enable Delirium for me, which is nice. Pull that land into the graveyard. I guess we're going to cast this card. 
and I'm trying to get a oh that's nice yeah perfect let's take a grief and now we can send the turn back and then next turn we can grief and shotless agent in the same turn it's actually kind of funky how we want to sideboard here like it's not clear whether I want to be a living in deck or I want to be a footfalls deck I think I mean we could just have both living end and footfalls that's definitely an alternative mm, we can pitch Leyline to the Grief, that's interesting. So Bloodcrypt is gone. We don't need the Leyline. Hmm. Interesting that opponent shocks there. We'll see what's up. Not a great draw. So let's play when it's probably going to counter. Then we can play a Triumph and we can play Shardless Agent. And this is our last Cascade spell, actually. <laughs> Funnily enough. Oh no, we... Oh, we got a free Marauder? Nice. <laughs> free Marauder, let's go. And there's the footfalls. Would have been actually kind of exciting to like get a bunch of more others for free. Pretty hilarious. Opponent fetches and probably a counter spell on the footfalls. Force of negation. Yeah, that's fine. So we got a 2 2 and a 3 1. No, we can't, that can block. And unfortunately, we drew. <laughs> There's stupid footfalls. We still have a footfall coming off suspend next turn. But opponent down to one card. Really hoping this works out. Monkey gets in there, which my opponent can actually cast. That's pretty brutal. Actually, it would have been pretty nice to draw that Grief. <laughs> oh, they take the Marauder. They don't know I don't have anything to cascade into. Nice. So put us down to a single card. Please don't be exactly counter spell or force of negation, I guess. So let's cast Footfalls here. Oh, it is counter spell. Okay, another Leyline. Probably not with the Doctor Order. So I'm just going to concede because my opponent's got Lethal on board. Okay, so I want, and I think I also want this um maybe i want the endurances so i think i want to cut the force of negations and maybe even the forces of despair let's see what we got here we have to cut two more cards we could cut like a street wraith and maybe a footfalls i kind of want to have access to footfalls like footfall seems like fine in the matchup endurance is just sick grief is also kind of very nice the the cantrip is also quite strong to help us find our spells maybe just cut a scion could also just cut a ley line. Uh, let's cut a street wraith. Just so I don't take a bunch of damage. Well, this is interesting. So I don't have ley line, but I can get a quick something something into play. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one for science. So we want to get the black red, I guess. We want to get the black red dual land. The survey land, that is. We can cycle on turn two. One has got turn one monkey again. Good for them. There comes this. <laughs> Oh man. Well, there goes a footfalls. And tap. Hmm, okay. Don't mind if I do. So this means that now I can fetch for a breeding pool. And now Delirion is online. Take an endurance. Interesting. Not great, but interesting. We can cycle Architects of Will. Then we're gonna be good to go on Delirium. <laughs> Leyline. I dare you, opponent. Preordain. Opponent plays a bubble. Uh, one problematic thing that I just found out is that we do not have a non-cycling, a non-surveil second green source, which is a little bit problematic here. Quite annoying. Uh, so let's, I think I'm just gonna play a Draco. So play Savai Triumph and go for a Draco. Opponent's probably gonna counter this. They can also potentially unholy heat it. The nice thing is that then I can use the Marauder to find potentially a living end and then the Draco comes back. So kind of what I really want to draw here is going to be a black card. I guess I can also just hard cast this grief. Probably have to fetch a basic island to do that, however, which is far from ideal. We can also just double Marauder. Unlicensed hers? No! No! Okay, we're dead now. <laughs> we're super dead now. Please get cheeky, opponent. Please, please try to get tricky here and just hold up the hearse. Because if this is on the stack, uh, once I have Delirium, like, that's it. Like, the stack, the trigger is on the stack already. Boom! All right. Uh, yeah. I could have led on Grief, but then if my opponent knows what's up. Crashing Footfalls. They exile two things. Fine. Here's some 4 force. Fortunately, my opponent exiled the correct things here. Oh, never mind. I can just Magus of the Moon. But they have nothing left. <laughs> the problem is I have twice as much like i have a higher chance of hitting a living end, a living end which i don't know if i want right now like if i leave in end what do i get i just get a grief which i know is not fetching anything so i guess i just chill and we're gonna get like another green source so that i can block this murktide regent as a waste to buy time solid top deck opponent 
pretty solid top deck, not gonna lie. Maybe I should have just YOLO'd and tried to just get second Rhinos. Like, I'm not super sure that things get that much better for me. I mean, we do have some draws, so I guess there's that. One in swings five, we go to seven. Instead, we're gonna get our Survey Land, slash second Green's Horse, mind you. Uh, interesting. I guess we can draw this. Unfortunately, this gives first strike to the Marauder, which doesn't help me against the 4-4 four, four unlicensed hers. I think I want to keep it anyway as a blocker. So, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, we're going to swing with everything. And in response to my opponent's exiling, I'm going to Endurance. Yeah, so the exiling response cast Endurance and Endurance myself. This keeps the unlicensed hers small. And now my opponent's taking... 11 down to 2. They do get some value here. They get to bubble themselves. Then they get to surveil the land away. Okay, so they're drawing something good. So here I think I'm just chomping the, the Merktide Regent. Triple blue. Oh, what a wara. Yeah, okay, that kills me. Yeah, that's unfortunate. There was not much I can do about that. <laughs> that would have been something I could have done about it, but not in time. All right, see you next round. Round number 2. Hell yeah, let's keep this. We're only going to put one ley line into play. Uh, if my opponent has, I know, they have their own late lines or whatever, then that's gonna suck. But this is a black card that I can pitch to force. So, put one of those. Now I'm gonna put the other one of those. Let's see what we're up against. Crumbling Vestige? <laughs> I know about this. I know about this. Mm -hmm. Force of Despair, probably gonna be kind of insane here, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and... I guess I can just cast this. Yeah, let's just cast this. We found the grief. Oh, interesting. I think I actually want a shard less here though. I feel like I need a clock and we already have the combo turn covered. Uh-oh. When his deck looks strong. Getting some surveil value over there. Ooh, look at that. So I think I want to just get a, a tap land here on upkeep. So let's get hedge maze. Huh, okay. Let's put that on top. And I guess we're gonna do this one more time. Grief is a good pickup, so let's Grief, pitch in the ley line, and yeah, we're gonna take that one ring <laughs> that we cannot realistically beat. We're gonna worry about the Primeval Titan when the time comes. Any land allows my opponent to transmute for a, for a bounce land, and then we can potentially blow them out, so that's kind of cute. Play out the T-West, and just shift the turn back. Interesting. So, yeah, here's a, here's a Charlotte's Agent. Let's do some Cascading. Let's do some... Casting of Rhinos. Uh, let's do some passing of the turn. So now I would really like to draw a Draco. Mycosynth Gardens. Cool. Hey, yeah, that one. <laughs> okay, so this is better than anything else I can do here, right? So there's nothing I can Street Wraith into or whatever. So I guess we just cast the Draco and everything's untouchable. So we for 10 and we have Force of Despair. So we have, we have everything covered. I can also get the survey land and I guess could cycle, but like there's nothing I'm really getting because like I already have everything that I want. Expedition map, crack map. Unless they have another amulet, they, they just don't have enough mana here. Oh, they can they can have Gracer or something. They copy, no, they have a third amulet. They have a Dryad, Summoner's Pact. Okay, so they are gonna have a Dryad. Play Dryad, make a bunch of mana, cast prime time. And there he is, my boy, my man. <sighs> Love that guy. I miss that guy. You know, him and him and I, we, we were close. We were close. Those were the days. Also, how much of a banger is this Force of Despair? So sick. Did my opponent just mess it up? Oh, they, they have Teleri West in hand. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. That makes sense. I forgot that they bounced the Teleri West with the bounce land. Tight play. Tight play for my opponent. There's no way they're going to see what's about to, to happen to them. We'll see what my opponent does here. There have been some new play patterns that have started to show up, which I'm honestly not familiar with, with like Mirror Pool and things like that. So we'll see what my opponent's going to do here. Also, my dudes have Hexproof. How how did they think that it was a good thing for this to give Hexproof? Like, for, I guess for this, not this, but don't you love magic design? So this is just to give haste to everything. Let me say something. I have effect. I have effect. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, this is too funny. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. this. This is definitely... Man, I have not taken a screenshot in a while. This this is screenshot worthy right here. This is definitely screenshot worthy. Okay, so what do we want here? Subtlety sounds amazing. 
And it's crazy to me that this deck can support all of these free spells. They're all in different colors. Like we have Grief, Subtlety, Force of Negation, Force of Despair, and Endurance. This just counts towards everything. This just counts towards half of them. Same as Shadow's Agent. This just counts towards the other half. <laughs> it's insane. Like how crazy is that? Pretty ridiculous, honestly. Do I think I want to be a living end deck here. I think this is this is one of the living end matchups. Like I honestly don't think that Ine inevitable betrayal does enough. I feel like inevitable betrayal is going to be against like Tron, something like that. I don't think this is an inevitable betrayal matchup. So oh, I don't know why I put endurance here. Yeah, this this ones don't want to come in. Uh, the griefs are great. Force is great. The other force is also great because my opponent is going to have like nonsense such as the one ring and whatnot. I don't think I can afford to play Leyline Binding though. Am I cutting Leyline in this matchup? I mean, it, I guess it enables my thing, so maybe not. I think I want to cut a Draco though. It is kind of weird though that once I Force of Despair, then I cannot leave in end. Because otherwise my opponent is just going to get much more value <laughs> from it than I am. So that is something to keep in mind. Yeah, we'll just cut some Dracos. And I guess a Force of Negation. And a Leyline. I just talked about how great Leyline is because it enables all of my free spells, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking this and I'm just... Oh, perfect hand. Though notably, I mean, I'm st it's still a turn to Draco. Like, it's it's pretty good. Although I guess I can still turn to Draco anyway. I mean, no, I, I mean, Leyline is just strong here. There's the Leyline. Opponent moves to five. If there's a deck I respect and I'm moving into five, though, it's Amulet. So opponent has a forest in hand and three unknowns. Let's play this and say go. There's the forest. No attack with Gracer. Okay, here's a maze. Do you actually want this just to pitch? No, I, I I need to do something better. I need to do better than this, I think. That is not bad at all. It is something I can pitch to the Force of Despair, or I can pitch the Force of Despair too. Yeah, because I'm probably going to be subtleting, so let's grief here, pitching the Force. This is good if I find a one ring also. Hey, <laughs> look at that. So, one of the symbols sage you, interesting. So... Here's here's a dude, I guess. So they do Boseju, you, and we're just gonna get some value. Beanie in a breeding pool. Does this have any more fetchables now? Yeah, I think I'm out of fetchable. Oh, I have the Sabai Triumph still. So I can still get the Triumph. But there's no way I'm supposed to keep the breeding pool there, right? It's just so bad for me. Not gonna fetch it on upkeep, though. Yeah, the, <laughs> the only fetchable I had. Uh, so I don't have a second green source, which is rather awkward. So aim for four. One in camp, cast Primeval Titan here. Even if they had it. Let's get the last fetchable. Definitely don't want to make want to make sure we don't draw that. A... Yeah, I'm going to cast Grief now. Just to put a more pressure. To Larry West. Interesting. Uh, they should have played the T West there, actually. Because now if they find a Bounce Land, they're not going to be able to. So by playing out the T West, then my opponent would have made any Bounce Land they draw into a much better draw. Because they can just, just mute. There's an Amulet. Still should have just played that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we swing for seven. Unfortunately, I cannot cast this incubation. I mean, I guess I can, but then I'm I'm stuck just pitching this subtlety. I mean, I can. I, I it's probably worth doing. I can find another scion. Yeah, yeah. So this just speeds up my clock pretty significantly. Although I guess it doesn't. Like we're still on the same clock. Do one ring. That sucks. It's a good draw for my opponent. Would love to draw. It's a dead draw. So I guess I can't even attack because all the damage is prevented. The good thing though is that now we can assist. We have what? 11 power, which means they're gonna die on their upkeep. And we just have subtlety to counter whatever threat they may play. So they would need like Gracer into prime time and stuff like that. Multiple blockers. There's the growth chamber. That's their land for turn. Transmute. Resolves. So I guess they just whiffed. Uh, yeah, we can just cast this. So subtle to the Dryad. There's no combination of cards that, because they already played their land drop, there's no combination of cards that they can have here that kills me. So this is fine to subtlety there. All right, cool. Round number three. Yeah, this looks good to me. Uh, oddly enough, if we play this out, we are not going to have access to something to pitch to the Grief. But I think that's fine. We still have a pitch for the Force of Negation. Marsh Flats. Calling Tarns, not a great draw. Let's send that turn back. We're gonna get a, a land on end step. It's honestly kind of... This is my least favorite thing about Modern right now. Like, this is the play pattern. This is just the play pattern that every deck does. I mean, look at this. Every turn looks exactly the same. I find that pretty boring myself, but... Force of Despair, I don't think this is the matchup for. 
it was a black card for for force so there's that but for grief i mean sign of draco or i can just get architects of will or street wraith as a way to guarantee that i have no i think i'm just gonna get the scion here like it's still pretty likely for me to achieve delirium look at that another <laughs> <laughs> we're just playing a, we're just secretly playing a mirror match here where we're just fetching for the same cards over and over again so tainted indulgence puts the atraxa in the graveyard and this is most definitely a matchup oh yeah we'll put that in the, in the bin this is most definitely a matchup for the um the blue card in the sideboard oh, this is so rough this is so rough because i cannot put this agent like if i play this agent i don't have force of negation mana anymore so i think i'm just gonna play the land and say go and wait until i find a black card to pitch to the grief Leyline doesn't affect cards in my hand right no it doesn't okay so now we're playing an interesting game here because my opponent can just gorios me at any time they're short of mana I think I'm just going to play this out and just say go. Just hold up Force of Negation. I can't afford for a Gorious Vengeance to come into play. Tainted Indulgence. That one can resolve. Next turn, what I can do is I can play a Scion and begin begin the grind. Uh, the best draw would be a Black card. Just the Scion. Send the turn back. That thing. That's fine. There's the Gorious Vengeance. So now we know for a fact my opponent's got it. Would love to draw a Black card here. Hey, look at that. This is also uh, an enabler for Delirium. So grief you. <laughs> they already had the Gorios. Steam Core Scholar. Flying Vigilance. And as well, if you draw two, then this card two. It's kind of value. So yeah, definitely let's take that. Creature goes to the graveyard. Now we have Cascade. Crushing Footfalls. And Foria. My opponent can, you know, draw their own another Gorios here. But it is what it is. Can only do so much here. Also, my opponent is going to have a number of looks next turn. Because we know that they have another archaeologist. There's the ephemerate and they whiffed another archaeologist. And they did find the Gorios, but they don't have enough. Ha! <laughs> ETB tap land, baby. <laughs> punish. Pu -pu -pu punish. We still have one foot falls left. It's a lot of dudes. There's no way my opponent's playing any sweepers, right? So we swing with all the guys. My opponent can block this, but they still take eleven. It's probably worth it for them because they have a they have an ephemerate coming up. I'm fortunate that I could not find a second Scion because that would have allowed me to have a free block on the Atraxa. But it's funny that my opponent whiffing actually mattered. Another footfalls. Not playing around explosives or anything like that. I don't think I can. And there's no point in holding on to this Shardless Agent here. Hey, I actually forgot that I could just cascade into another 3-1. Okay, that's kind of value. <laughs> Gonna whiff on the second one, but like, I mean, that's still 5 power. Like, that's no joke. Like, I don't know if a Traxa can save my opponent here. It just takes 7, they go up to however much. They whiffed on the Archaeologist again. They go real the Atraxa, we'll see what they find. Uh, this is really annoying. So we know about these cards, they did cast the Tainted and Dungeons. Man, that's so kind of really frustrating that it Moto doesn't tell you, like, doesn't just show the cards that they took. It tells you in the text, but still have way more than enough mana here, I think. One can Ephemerate or Traxa, they're gonna reveal more cards even but i have first strike so yeah them being able to block doesn't matter because i i deal they, they don't gain their life because i deal the damage first good so i guess playing out the ley line did matter awesome so endurance comes in inevitable betrayal comes in i want the forces i want the ley line bindings probably what is not great probably not great the the ley line scion draco is it, it, it it's just a messed up combo <laughs> like it's just so free it's kind of stupid force of despair does protect me against griso brand but i think i'd rather have force of negation and endurance instead grief seems fine ley line binding does this but better so that's probably okay what do we want to do we're not doing super hot in green cards for Endurance, though. We only have super, super great. Cut a couple of Street Raids and maybe a Ley Line. I, I don't want to cut a Ley Line, though. Just said how I'm short on green cards. I'm just going to cut another Street Wraith. But, I mean, this is a matchup where they can't really pressure my life total. Like, Street Wraith seems, I'm sure, seems actually pretty good. Let's cut Architects, I guess. Cut two Architects. I know that they nailed the Delirium. Maybe they're necessary. I don't know. Man, it's so awkward. Let's cut a Ley Line. Maybe it should be kind of land. Honestly, I'm not super into the gemstone caverns. Interesting. The sign is not looking too hot right now. It may be okay. Yeah, let's keep. I, I'm kind of very interested in keeping seven in this sort of matchup. Maybe it should be mulliganing a little bit too aggressive. A little bit more aggressively, I mean. Another land that does... Ooh, look at the value. Another land that 
does the same thing that every other land does. I think I want to... I mean, I can play it Drake on turn 2. Let's just grieve here. My opponent moved to 5. I think I just want to make sure that I don't just die. I think I want to take the Tainted Indulgence. And then I think that the plan is going to be to get a Triumph on end step, then untap, and just play a Draco. Find a breeding pool. So this already establishes my clock. For a turn, it's no joke. Okay, they did find... Okay, so I imagine they're going to take the Ephemerate here. Oh, no, they can't cast it, so I guess they're going to take... Oh, they did take the Ephemerate. Okay. Turn on land there is pretty nice, so let's take Love Crypt here. Oh, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I thought I had the blue-green. Whoops, my bad. Well, I should have probably an attract sign play, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty bad mistake on my part. Don't have double blue either. Yeah, I guess I should be paying much more close attention to. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get bailout. I should be playing much closer attention to my mana, I think. Let's see if I can get the Marauder now. Oh, interesting. Maybe my opponent will counter this. They don't. So, cycle, another endurance. So, we have force and we have endurance right now. So, I'm not sure that my opponent's going to be super liking to combo. Yeah, so they just back it in. They missed the land drop. They don't want to play anymore. Hey, look at that. All right, see you for the next round. Round number four. Yeah, this is not great. Ship it. I guess it's better. So, this leaves us actually quite close to achieving Lyrium here. I think I'm going to keep this. Obviously, bottom in the footfalls. We have no green, no green um, pitch cards. Game one. And also moves to six marsh flats. We're playing against the same deck again. Ornithopter, hammer. Yeah, we probably have to counter that. I mean, I don't love doing that, but with my opponent on a move to five, I think fighting over that is better than trying to fight over the actual hammers. This seems like a fantastic matchup for the living end pivot cyborg plan. Yay! Good for me. Good for me who chose to counter the cigar. Let's say not good for me because as percent in all is gonna. Probably own me. Hedge Mace, bin that, untap, grief. We're going to do some more surveilling, and then hopefully next turn we're gonna have. So the dream here is we do we get the survey land, and we get to bin we get to bin uh, like a incubation or the cycling guy. I think I may be packing this in. I don't think I can win this game. Like my opponent's dudes are gonna be larger than my dudes, <laughs> and I can't do much about that like i'm obviously gonna play it for a little bit here but i don't have yeah and i don't have any hopes anymore i was gonna say i don't have high hopes for this game and now i'm gonna say i don't have any hope i think i'd rather just hide which deck i'm playing so i think i'm just gonna pack it in I think i'm just gonna pack it in and i'm just gonna hide which deck i'm playing and now we can bring in the leaving ends bring in foundation breaker ley line binding Mm, I don't think Force of Despair is actually great. So we're going to cut those. Oh, Force of Negation is much worse than Force of Despair. Let's bring in Subtleties and one Force of Despair, I guess. I'm expecting a bunch of Chalices and the guy that means that, that makes it so you can't cast the cards uh, from Exile. What do we got here? Okay, turn three, leaving end. Like this. I do like this. So let's lead on this card and get a Foundation Breaker. Perfect. <laughs> it's pretty good value. Pretty good value. I like that. Ornithopter drawn. Untap. So we're just going to pass the turn. So my opponent should deploy the chalice now. Cycle marsh flats. I said cycle, I meant fetch. <laughs> white white for paladin. It's perfectly okay. Cigar the save. Also perfectly okay. Let's fetch here. And we're going to get the theater. Draco. Free Draco? Hell yeah. Free Dracos. Oh, I forgot to cycle. Oh, wait, that sucks. I meant to cycle with Architects. Okay, never mind. Very smart of me to not cycle there. Very, very smart of me to not cycle. <laughs> Refia, what you got? Peeding Needle? Yeah, that's cool. Cool, I'll take your Peeding Needle. Now, we are just going to get a Breeding Pool. And not be an idiot. <laughs> very much will not be an idiot here. Oh, the Breeding Pool's in play. <laughs> God damn it. Just can't catch a break, huh? All right, guess I'll just get a Savai Triumph. Man, I just can't catch a break here, can I? I think I'm actually gonna blow up the Springleaf Drum. Yeah, th this mana base definitely needs some needs some reworking. So we we can die here if my opponent just finds naturally um, a, a guy. I guess we can also die if my opponent finds um, the uh, like a Chalice. So we lose to Chalice and we lose to like land to something else. But we should be cooking otherwise. There's Hammer. They don't have it. All right, cool. So now we play the Charlotte's Agent. Wait, did I just throw the game away again? 
I think I just threw the game away again. Unless I find a Marauder here. Did I just get the wrong land again? How can I be this bad? <laughs> oh, this mana base is going to kill me. Oh, this mana base is brutal, man. Why am I doing this? <laughs> Also, I have no... Like, I need to find exactly an untapped blue source now. Oh, man. I just threw this game so many different ways. It's okay. I, I deserve to lose this. But, man, does it feel bad? Feels bad to be bad, man. Feels bad to be bad. This is funny, though. <laughs> this is just absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I'll chump. So, the only draws that matter here are untapped blue source or untapped green source, which I have none, and the Marauder guy. Those are the only two draws that matter. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> I'm so freaking good. Just so good. Ooh, we get a Marauder for free? Let's go. This is so much value. My mind is absolutely blown right now. This deck seems like a lot of fun, but I'm just playing it extremely casually, and I feel like... I mean, I, I the mana base is just not idiot-proof. <laughs> um, do I want to blow up the Cigardas Aid or the Hammer? I think I want to blow up the Hammer... Forge a new or Cryptic Coat. Two new cards. Uh, I think I want to take the Cryptic Coat because Forge a new doesn't really do anything right now. Well, the other one gives me a creature. Like the Forge a new is kind of redundant with the Cigar the Sail here. Oh, that's right. They get to do that. I forgot that this is an equipment. Okay, that's a thing. Still seems like I'm in good shape here. A <laughs> great draw. Fantastic draw. Not nowhere even close to having done the math on whether this is lethal or not, but. It's okay, we'll figure it out together. <laughs> we'll learn together about this. I think it's exactly lethal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly lethal. I'm not mistaken. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> that was that was something. Do I want Force of Despair? Do I want Endurance? No, I don't think so. I think all my other cards are better. So let's ship it. Shout out to the deck, by the way, for just bailing me out so hard there. I promise I'm going to, to pay more attention now. Not. Okay, so I'd be a lot more excited about this hand. If there were a ley line or something like that. The fact that I have one of my only two leaving ends makes me not super stoked about this either. So I'm just gonna ship it. No lander, ship it. I'm gonna keep this one, uh, which is not great. We're going to bottom the shardless agent, and I get we're gonna bottom the scion. It's kind of a brutal draw when I move to five. Let's play the delta and ship the turn back. We're gonna get the green white cycle land. I keep saying cycle land, I mean, keep meaning surveil land. Foundation breaker is a great draw though. Paladin. No attacks. Absolute coward. Put this hedge maze into play. Yeah, gonna be in that. We're going to evoke, blow up the sentinel. This means we're gonna get a sentinel back next turn, but I can probably live with that. Really wish I had my ley line binding now. My uh, foundation breaker now. Shadow Spear. Still, they don't have enough artifacts for Metalcraft. Okay, they're getting close to having enough artifacts for Metalcraft. <laughs> Am I dead? Not dead. Gonna be dead next turn. They keep not attacking. I wonder what the hell is going on there. Let's see if this can do something. So I don't really have much else going on. So I'm gonna take a Marauder here, I guess. Alternatively, I could take a Grief. What can I Incubation into? I think I'm gonna take Grief here. And I'm going to Incubation again. Because I can find a black creature. Yeah. So now I can, I can, now I can pitch the Grief. So Grief, pitch Street Grief. Maybe I should have Theater at first. Surge of Salvation. No targets. Play land. Bean land. Hope I don't die. Hope I don't die and I don't get Chalice. Let's put it like that. My opponent is definitely incentivized to just make a dude main phase and then equip. Unless they have a, an artifact, in which case I'm pretty dead. Oh, yeah, we're, we're actually just dead here. Just get second hammer. We just get hammered to death. That's unfortunate. We were close. We were close to getting there, but yeah. The, this deck's mana base is sketchy. Really sketchy. Okay. Let's go. Let's get go to the last round. Yeah, okay, this hand is just it's just perfect, right? This is just the perfect hand. <laughs> Can you just take a picture of this hand? The perfect hand does not exist. Yeah, we're gonna keep this. So here's a ley line, here's a gemstone caverns. Okay. And we're gonna bin, I guess we're gonna bin the Charles Agent. Don't Fotsies me, bro. It's not cool. Eh, there's a Fotsies. Oh man. I'm gonna take my Draco and stuff now. I have the perfect. Perfect. One-two punch. So brutal. Marsh Flats. We're playing against the Reanimator deck again. Fetch on end step. Let's get our Hedge Maze. And Bina Land. Looking for Black Creature would be nice. A uh, Black card, I meant. That's, that'll do. So now we get to Grief. And then we Shardless. Not as exciting without the Scion. 
But it is what it is. It is. Is, is like everybody in Modern just playing exactly the same decks now? I feel like all the decks are exactly the same. It's the same deck over and over again. Okay, take the Glorious Vengeance. Play this. Blue. Green. And this. Oh no, I can get him Marauder. Oh my god, this is a disaster. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> I hadn't, I assumed that I had Delirium, but uh, that's right. This is only creature artifact and the grief doesn't add to the different count. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, that's heinous. Okay, that's a great draw at least. This is still, it's not, it's not a stupid, silly clock, right? It's still a three turn clock. My brother doesn't have infinite time to find what they're looking for. Funnily enough, the best thing they can draw would be like the, the O3. The O3 will be, would be pretty good right now. Also, my brother, did you, I think they just played a land that they, I didn't know about. <laughs> I think they just played the literal only card that I do not know about. Let's cycle, see if we find something sweet. Okay, it's not heinous by any stretch of the imagination. Definitely pretty rough that we cascade into more other. I mean, it's it's likely though. We have four more others and only three footfalls here. So they've been indulgent, really. Interesting. And they played out a fetch land that leaves them dead on board. I mean, I'm gonna swing. If they have Gorius plus Counterspell, so be it. Oh, Solitude. Yeah, this is terrible for me. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, should have probably done it the other way around. So I gain one less life. Not that it matters too, too much, but... So I'm basically forcing literally anything here. Please be something I can force. It's not something I can force. At least whatever they grief here is going to enable Delirium. So if I find the Cascader now, we're in business. <laughs> Gross. All right, send the turn back. Untap land, does something at least. When it gets in there, ship the turn back. Untap. I will cast these grief. And I hope that you don't have the Gorios right now. Because if you do, that's going to be really bad for me. My opponent could also have Solitude here, which would also be a disaster. Uh, I think I'm going to take the Thoughtseize. Maybe my opponent has a way to make a fourth color of mana. But uh, Thoughtseize seems quite relevant when I have Force of Negation in hand. And both of my things are four colors, so Faithful Mending. That's pretty good. That's that's really good, actually. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. That is extremely good. Huh. I do wonder if I should have just forced the Faithful Mending there. Just take the two for one. Okay, they whiffed. So at least we got that going on. We don't have attacks, though, because we would just trade for the Grief. But at least they have nothing going on. Okay, let's play the Theater. See what there's what's on top. Food falls. Yeah, I don't think we can afford that. Do I care about swinging? Yeah, I think I just send the turn back. Maybe I should have fetched on upkeep. Maybe. Ephemerate. I mean, I'm gonna counter this. It's not like there's anything else I can do, right? If they ephemerate, they just get the card back anyway, so... Yeah, another land's not what we were looking for. Is there any reason to hold on to this land here? Is there any reason to hold on to this land? Let's play out the breeding pool and ship the turn back. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to play it, but there's also no reason to like show my opponent my hand. So now I think my opponent is the one that's ahead super much, but they're definitely ahead. They also have that mending in the graveyard, which is two new looks at a Gorious Vengeance. And once they do find the Vengeance, then the game obviously ends. Okay, they've been the Vengeance, which means that they have another one. Seen enough. Bring me those inevitable betrayals. Been that. Bring in these and the leyline bindings and i think we cut the forces of despair man we we got so punished like if we had cascaded into into like a regular like a regular cascader would have been fine like if we had just gotten a crashing footfalls <laughs> we we definitely got hit there by the the cutesiness of the deck right there there's a very real cost to shardless agenting into a blood rain or other okay so what are we doing here grief is good street breath is good Endurance is good. Maybe an architect. We're on the play now. Man, we had such a great start. We just just wasn't in the cards. It's got a Draco and the Leyline. I guess this is what we did last time. Or we, we did something similar to this. It's probably okay. Uh, yeah, this hand seems fine. Let's keep this. We do get to Leyline on one, which means that our mana is gonna be perfect. We love to see it. The question is, am I griefing on one? And I think I am. Obviously, we're gonna hedge maze first. So we're looking for land here. We can play on turn three. Force of negation. Nah, I don't think we want that. Let's cast grief. See where we're. Oh, okay. Take the archaeologist. It's not like we're gonna be doing anything against those Gorus vengeances anyway. Marsh flat. Cool. Okay, so ship the turn back, and we're gonna get to inevitable betrayal here on turn three, which is pretty exciting. Under city source. Would love to dodge a thought seize. Supreme verdict. Sounds good. Sounds good. 
Got the shrine that we did know about. Ship on end step. Get the theater. Put that into the graveyard. So now we have everything covered. We've got it all covered. Even if we get a Marauder here, we are, we are, we're going to be okay. We did get the betrayal though. Just please don't get spell pierced. Tainted indulgence. Okay. Binning Grizzlebrand. So the question now is do we want to get a Traxxor or do we want to get Grizzlebrand? So if I weren't so lazy, I could probably figure out like what they have in their deck, in, in their hand, because they have two unknown cards. I guess I just Grizzlebrand. And I think I just draw seven now. This looks okay. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. I think I will be okay now. So let's discard. One of these and one of that. So we have Force of Negation plus White card, two mana, two Gorios. Just going to Endurance, pitching the Leyline. One and packs it in. All right, cool, cool, cool. Last game. What can we do here? What can we do? I guess we do want Scion to fix things up there in the 7 7 mirror match. They do have Supreme Verdict, which is kind of annoying. Let's bring back the Architects because we are kind of short on black cards so take out the ley line and yeah never mind let's cut the draco submit not the best or, but <laughs> not the best hand i've ever seen seen better than this one down to five this one's kind of sexy yeah let's keep this one i think i'm gonna bottom the force of negation actually put the ley line into play so i'm gonna fix all of my mana issues all of my mana problems fixed let's i guess i pass or do i want incubation i think i actually want incubation or another street wraith Actually, I want to take another Street Wraith because this gets me closer to a green card so I don't have to pitch my Shardless Agent to. And I don't think my opponent can very easily punish me for this. So we have virtually three types with a Street Wraith. So this plus Street Wraith plus land should be enough to do the thing. Another Endurance. Cool. I like that. Don't like that part as much, but okay. So let's play the ATB tap land. Surveil. Huh. I actually want to keep that on top so that I can shuffle it away. I feel like that's kind of the only card in that scenario that I would be keeping on top, <laughs> funnily enough. We do have double endurance here, just looking quite nice. Blue black, indulgence, Bane Gristlebrand, blue and black, Gorius. Let's fetch here, get the other surveil land. You gotta be kidding me, dude. Really? <laughs> I guess I'm gonna keep this on top. I, I just have to keep this on top. Just so I guarantee that I don't draw the second one. Like, how brutal is that? Man, that's devastating. So Endurance you. Gorius is gonna fizzle. Man, <laughs> that is so rough. That is so insanely rough. Green, blue, and one. Cast Marauder. Cascade into Betrayal. Once again, we're going to get a daddy. Get the Greasel daddy. And I think I'm just gonna draw seven now. Again, because I may find the pitch card. Uh, These are not great. Should be turned back. Discard, Blood Crypt, and one of those lands. It's looking okay. So if my opponent solitudes, I'm just going to, to draw seven again. So we're probably going to be in fine shape anyways. Mending is fine. I'm probably going to draw seven anyway, just so I can potentially find the Draco. Uh, let's actually just cast this first. Cast Incubation. Ding, ding, ding. Cast the Draco. And now we do the thing. Swing for a bunch. Opponent could have Verdict. Let's try to draw Grief. We already have the black card. Hey, look at that. Grizzlebrand definitely better than Atraxa right here. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a limb and just say that. This was fun! Alright, this this inevitable betrayal game cyber plan, I'm into it. I'm very much into it. If everybody's gonna be playing that reanimator deck, I'm game. Okay, so that was actually kind of fun. This deck had, uh, had much more game than I originally expected. I thought it was gonna be just kind of a meme, and then it just turned out that it was somewhat legit and delirium was more reliable than i expected still uh, we did i mean besides probably poor cyberding besides just messing up the mana on multiple locations uh this deck has some problems like it's cute like it's doing something cool but it, it has some pretty serious problems uh, number one is the mana as i just said like ha having the, the mana faster because this in is enabled through exiling and this uh, just doesn't really put more uh, like it doesn't put anything to the graveyard like, th that one game where we Shadowless Agent into a Marauder was just so disastrous. So, there is definitely some cost to having this Marauder card here. Also, like, we are super soft to to Endurance, which is something to keep in mind. Particularly, the Living End game plan is super soft to Endurance. But, uh, that's besides the point. Uh, we're probably not going to be playing the Living End game plan versus Endurance matchups. But, 
Uh, yeah, just uh, some interesting stuff going on here. The Force of Despair was hilarious. I'm really happy that we drew it against Amulet, which is probably literally the best matchup for this card. Uh, with the, the Forces of Negations were also good. Like, all of the free spells, are they're just good, right? This is messed up. <laughs> this is just so freaking stupid. Um, it just blows my mind that once again, uh, R&D could not figure out, like, they, they just, you, you just can tell that they do not test modern, what, they, they do not test modern at all. Uh, this is just another example that they do not test modern at, at all. Um, it, I do think that modern is, like, okay in small doses, but the play patterns are so repetitive. Every single game, regardless of which deck you're playing, every single deck starts out exactly the same. Play a fetch land, pass the turn, get my survey land, like accrue some little value here and there. Then like play play a ley line, get a Draco into play. Like every deck just kind of feels like the same. Like we're all trying to do the same and just like different flavors of the same thing. Um, so I'm not excited about this format like at all. <laughs> I just don't like it. Uh, but it was fun to like play a single league. Um, but this deck in particular was like silly enough to like be exciting at least. So I like that aspect of it. The inevitable betrayals in the cyber will just hilarious. If this, I have no idea about the meta or anything like that. So like you know, I'm, what I'm saying is like if the this reanimator deck is gonna be popular, this inevitable betrayal cyber plan is kind of insane. So this is great. This I'm a little bit more skeptical about. Uh, sure, like, all of these cards are, like, medium, but, like, what we end up happening a couple of times so, was that we would leave it in for, like, something medium or, like, against, uh, I think it was against Amulet where we're just, like, we could kind of not cast leaving in at all. Uh, so it was a little bit weird. Uh, this needing Delirium is kind of pretty bad, so I would probably just play the other card that people are playing, the Ardent Plea instead, so that may be a better way to go about it. Uh, the mana base definitely needs to be reworked, it's it's just too bad. Like, it happened multiple times where we needed, like, a second green, or we needed, like, another green and a blue, and, like, we had milled one of our few blue sources or whatever, so I'm not sure that we even want Gemstone Caverns. Like, it, maybe this is not the problem, maybe we just have to cut an, an, a land and just, like, add, a, I don't know, like, a green black i guess like overgrown tomb also like the two ley line bindings with only a single white source is a little bit sus but um otherwise like once you figure out the mana which it, it's not this <laughs> that part i can guarantee it's this is not the mana base that you want to be playing uh, once you fix the mana uh the deck is doing something kind of powerful because this cascade cards are all messed up and they are all good in different situations uh Oddly enough, they kind of get host by the same cards, so that's uh, kind of like a pretty big hole in this deck's strategy. We didn't face a single chalice or, uh, you know, one of one of those cards, so that was lucky for us. But yeah, um, this, this Cascade cards are still just a mess up as they were before the banning of Violin Outburst. This deck was fun though, it was a good time, I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you did as well, if you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and uh, thank you stops once again for this uh, glorious dono deck list hope you liked it that's it for me folks i will see you next time take care and bye bye